Adobe has finally released Photoshop for Android, but is it really worth downloading right now? Let's find out. Make sure to watch the video till the end so you don't end up wasting 300 megabytes of your data on this app. And yeah, don't forget to like the video and share your thoughts in the comments. As we open the app, we're greeted with an interface like this. At the top, you can see some sample images showing what you can do with the app. But let's remove them by clicking the X mark. That looks much cleaner. Now, for some reason, they've repeated the same options in different places. For example, there's an option to add a photo, either from your gallery or by creating a new canvas. And strangely, those exact options also appear when you click the plus icon. But there are two extra options here. In fact, there's a fifth one too, an option to add from Lightroom, which is marked as coming soon. Anyway, I'm going to create a new canvas. Here you get several choices. You can pick a custom size and create a canvas from scratch, or go to the social section to use presets for different platforms. For now, I'm selecting the Instagram portrait preset. These are the default settings. You can tweak them if you like, and then hit create. All right, we've created a canvas. Now let's add an image. Click the plus icon, then choose image layer and select a photo. In layer properties, I'm going to choose transform. This gives you a few options like scaling or distorting your image. Next is area. Here you get tools to cut out parts of your image. You can use the quick select brush to manually select the area like this. Then comes retouch. You get tools like healing, similar to Snapseed. It's not bad, it actually does a decent job. The remove tool requires internet, so I'll skip that for now. There's also clone stamp, which lets you duplicate parts of the image like this. Next is paint, but unfortunately it's currently unavailable. And that's a bit disappointing. Without brushes, you can't do highlights or detailing. Lastly, there's size, where you can change your canvas dimensions as needed. Your layers appear here. Click on them and you get a few more options. If you click the three dots, it shows a menu similar to Ibis Paint X. But there's one option that Ibis Paint doesn't have, Smart Object. If you convert an image to a smart object, then shrink it down, the quality appears to reduce. But when you scale it back up, the quality is perfectly preserved. This is probably my favorite feature in the app. Now let's move on to adjust layers. Right now there are three available. Hue, Brightness, Contrast, and Exposure with three more coming soon. The hue layer lets you adjust hue, saturation, and lightness, just like in Lightroom. Brightness slash contrast does what you'd expect, and exposure adjusts light levels. You also have options to change opacity and blending modes. When you're done, click the share icon to save. If you go into advanced export, you get more options, including saving your work as a PSD file. And that's pretty much it for the app. In my opinion, it's not a very powerful editing tool right now. It's kind of like a mix of Snapseed, PixArt, and Ibis Paint. At this stage, you can't really do any serious photo manipulation because it's still in beta. But maybe when the full version is released, we'll be able to do some really cool stuff. Oh, and there's also a generative fill AI tool. Definitely worth checking out. So in short, either wait for the full version or download it now and get used to the tools so you build some muscle memory. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video. Until then, bye.